Gordon. Ilya Kipchoge, remember, he was not on the list, even though everybody else was, to run Boston. But Japan Running News posted the headline, Kipchoge to run Tokyo Marathon if it happens and he can get into country. So there's a lot of qualifiers there, which perfectly <laughs> states the current situation going on in the world. And, and there's an article in there from Yahoo in Japan says they obviously want Kipchoge to run. He said before he wants to run all the majors. He has yet to run Tokyo. What do you think of his decision if he ultimately does decide to run in Tokyo? Well, I mean, I'm kind of more thinking about the whole headline, if it happens and if he can get into the country, which is hilarious. You know, that's never yeah. been a thing, but now it is. Uh, well, that's true. Both of those things are true and uh, obstacles for this to happen. Correct. But I'm what I'm what I'm not to ignore the Tokyo story. But if one of those does happen, if it does get canceled, or if he is denied access to the country, would he be like, "I'm doing Boston," and does Boston all of a sudden become a, a Bekele Chipkogi? Chip Kipchoge showdown 3.0, I guess it is, or whatever. How many times they've raced up against each other? I don't know, but it's not a fair fight anymore. Kipchoge would be the massive no. favorite. You look at that field, if Bekele, based on what he did in 2021, a top five finish for Bekele would be huge. I want to see him run anywhere. I obviously prefer Boston because I want to see him on the iconic course, and that field is so good. And if you add Kipchoge in there, it's undoubtedly the best Boston field ever assembled because they'll, they'd have everybody at that point. Yeah. Virtually everybody. Part of me However, feels like there's going to be some Boston and Boston meet organizers are going to try to figure out a way. It's like, let's just make sure that Tokyo race doesn't go down <laughs> as planned so we can pull Mr. Kipchoge over to uh, the U S. Yeah. I mean, he said he wants to run all six. He told you, Famously, in one of the greatest interviews ever conducted in track and field media history, that he wants to run one on a ship. What type of ship, we don't know. But he's got some goals. But doing Boston this year would be special because it's never going to be this deep again. Because London is going to be back in the spring for 2023. And the fields will be split. And as of this year, Boston has everything to itself. And it's going to be the strongest field. So I'd like to see him run in Boston. And then it's just an added bonus that it would be awesome to see him go against one of the deeper fields of his entire career. He's running against really tough competition in London. Don't get me wrong. It's not as if he has something to prove. But if we're going to see him get pushed, it would be in a race like Boston, where you have seven of the last eight champions. You have Jeffrey Camor. In the field, you have yeah the wild card there in Bekele. What uh, where has he not run yet? I guess it's just uh, New York. Has he run in New York yet? He has not run New York. He has not run Boston. Okay, so New York, run... Tokyo, and Boston. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he ran Chicago at the very beginning, which people forget about, and he beat Bekele in that race, and that was towards the beginning of his run and it was seen more as huh this guy who was a gold medalist a long time ago on the track was able to upset Pekele. That's a that's a pretty neat story. No one was thinking, oh this is he's gonna become the greatest men's marathoner in history. So listen, I wanna see this I wanna see him run a real marathon more than I want to see him do another time trial. So if I were to rank <laughs> the priority, I would put the time trial type thing that we've seen last um, then I put all the other marathons in one bucket and then I put New York and Boston in the highest priority for me to see Kipchoge run. And part of that is because I want to see him run on those historic courses. And as, as an American who's followed those races for years, it would just be cool to see the greatest marathoner on the men's side in history run. In the same way, I've said this comparison a bunch of times, I wanted to see Bolt at Hayward. And I think it's a bummer and it's a failure of track and field as a whole. Not any one person, not any one entity, but it just, it sucks. <laughs> track as a whole that we never got to see Usain Bolt at Hayward Field. Got to see him at Franklin Field at Penn. And that was amazing. But there should have been a way to get Usain Bolt 
to Hayward Field. And we never saw it. It makes sense now I think about why he would do Tokyo because if I'm trying to project out his career, he could then do like, I think doing New York, Tokyo back to back is a lot hard. It's a lot shorter of a time frame than doing New York, Boston back to back. Okay. Because you have an extra month of training. If he's trying to get all three out of the way before, but I think he's trying to go all the way to Paris. So maybe he can still spread it all out before Paris. He's probably going to, re- would he retire in Paris? I don't know. This man, no, he's I a just, machine. It feels like he's never going to lose ever again in his life. No, as as it doesn't. Keep but, but he is going to, and I don't want him to go to New York and Boston when he's on the downturn of his career. Because I want to see him yeah. go against a tough field, or I want to see him try to get a course record. That's what we want to get out of Kipchoge. We don't want to see it just as his career is winding down and he shows up just to make an appearance and he's not himself. We're lucky that he's been himself, as you mentioned, forever and seeming like his prime is never going to end. But we got to gotta capitalize on it and get him to New York and Boston.